Planes, trains and automobiles. Despite being a fantastic film starring Steve Martin and the late great John Candy, they have also traditionally been the only way to traverse the landscapes of our modern earth. But what if there was something better? What if you could get on board a vehicle in London, take a seat in a capsule for 20 or so minutes and find yourself stepping out into Morocco? It may sound like the stuff of science fiction, and well it is technically, but in actuality we're closer than you may think toward instantaneous global travel. Let me introduce you to the Hyperloop network and let's figure out just how and why it could potentially change everything forever. Hello internet what's going on and once again welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube Life's biggest questions. As per usual I'll be your disembodied floating voice Jack Finch as today we curiously ask the question what if earth had a global Hyperloop network? Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 2015's Tomorrowland, which wasn't exactly the greatest movie of all time, but it had some stunning visual depictions of a highly advanced technological society, and yet thankfully for us, we won't need to travel to an alternate dimension to experience the functions of Hyperloop technology, because as I said previously, we're much closer than you may expect to achieving instantaneous global transportation. But before we jump into the implications of a Hyperloop network on a global scale, let's first take take a quick look at just exactly what this thing is. In essence, a hyperloop is a mode of transportation that consists of a system of sealed tubes through which a pod-like vessel is propelled free of air resistance or friction, conveying people or objects at massive speeds while also being very efficient. In essence, it's what you get if you cross a railway with those pneumatic mail chutes you see in the post office, just on a massive scale. But actually, the biggest proponent of the hyperloop concept, the man himself, Elon Musk, who initially publicly proposed the Hyperloop back in 2012, described it as a cross between a Concorde, a railgun, and an air hockey table. So there we go. Another thing that Elon Musk is better at than me. Analogies. Musk marked the prospect of a hypothetical Hyperloop system with having five key characteristics for being successful for civilization. One, being immune to all weather. Two, being able to operate collision free. Three, capable of traveling at twice the speed of a plane. Four, operating at a low power consumption. And five, containing enough infrastructure and energy storage to operate at 24 hours a day. Through this model of operation, it hypothetically hits all the marks of any society's transportation wish list because in essence that's everything anyone has ever wanted from mass transportation. Move people and things from A to B in the fastest possible way in the most efficient manner. When we break down these five key characteristics we can avidly see the flaws in our current modes of mass transit. Planes are awesome but they burn a hell of a lot of fossil fuels and it takes massive amounts of energy to propel a giant steel bird at 135,000 feet in the air for a few hours. Cars are fun and sleek and stylish, but sitting in traffic sucks and breathing in noxious fumes isn't exactly everyone's cup of tea. Boats are great, they're full of adventure and nautical romance, but they're slow and they have a habitual history of leaking. So the alternative then, as is the course of human history, would rely on a breakthrough of technology and that's exactly what the Hyperloop concept is. And also as you may or may not know, it's already been doing it for years now as Elon Musk, SpaceX and Tesla have open sourced the same conceptual technology to everyone and since then dozens of recent researchers and engineers have jumped on the idea of trying their damnedest to shoot a pod through a tube in the safest and most efficient means possible. Yeah, it seems simple when you say it like that, doesn't it? And in actual fact, one of those open source compadres, Richard Branson's Virgin Hyperloop One, recently signed an intent agreement with the Indian government to construct a Hyperloop system between Mumbai and the city of Pune, which will cut a four hour journey to just 25 minutes. And once that's out of the way, after that the possibilities are endless. Las Vegas to Los Angeles in 30 minutes, Toronto to Montreal in 39 minutes, Abu Dhabi to Dubai in just 12 minutes. It sounds awesome, right? 
And one thing's for certain, our planet would become much more efficient. But here's the stick in the mud. Anything that requires a lot of people, as in the mass transportation and reshifting of populations that a global hyperloop network would deliver, also requires a lot of governance. How would we deal with a hyperloop journey that connected three different cities in three different countries along its route? Would we have to breach customs in every country? Because bureaucracy has a habit of slowing things down, whereas the Hyperloop's prime directive is to speed things up. One of the glaringly obvious advantages of a global Hyperloop network is the theoretical advantage of being able to commute from pretty much anywhere and everywhere on the planet. In theory, you could live in Glasgow and travel to work in Paris every morning with less stress than the average city commute in a bus or a car. You could spend half a day in Mexico City, then be in Las Vegas for dinner. But the thing is, how would cities deal with this new untapped influx of people? If London suddenly gained 10 of thousands of new workers from Helsinki in its daily commute that didn't even live there, is that going to boost the economy or just put more strain on the city's infrastructures? How would the municipal factor be effective? Who's going to check their passports? And then there's the whole issue of safety. The main advantage of a Hyperloop network is in its ability to transport a vessel at speeds of up to 800 miles per hour whilst also travelling in an airtight vacuum. But what happens when a natural disaster strikes? What if an earthquake shifts its tube system ever so slightly? How would emergency services even get inside a tube system that is devoid of all air to save the people inside? And now apply all of those issues thousands of times a day across the planet. Who's going to keep an eye on all of those potential disasters? Who's going to be checking the dials and monitoring the bleeps and the red flashing lights? Well, artificial intelligence. That's who. A global artificial intelligence for that matter, and hopefully its name won't be Skynet. You see, all of these are valid safety issues, but all of them have a feasible answer and explanation that has already been thought of during its design. The issue isn't in addressing these safety concerns or any other concerns for that matter, it's in the execution of them. You see, people are slow. Bureaucracy and safety features take manpower and effort. But with a global artificial intelligence monitoring every step of the way in a millionth billion of a second at all times, constantly, never blinking and never sleeping, all of these concerns would be efficiently, directly and swiftly addressed. The advantages of connecting our planet through global transportation technology are just way too good to pass up and eventually efficiency will always win out. In the past few decades our planet has become smaller and smaller as connectivity through technological means has proliferated its way across our civilization like Pokemon cards in a playground. The first Hyperloop route is set to begin construction this year in India with speculative reports of the first operational journeys beginning in 2021 with countless other cities already bidding for their own Hyperloop construction set to shortly follow afterwards. If our civilization can figure out a way to balance the many needs and parameters of a global Hyperloop network and apply it to every corner of the earth, the rewards are endless and our planet would be more connected than ever before. Hey, the future's pretty exciting, isn't it? Well, there we have it, the way that we see things if Earth was connected by a global Hyperloop network. It'd be pretty damn awesome, to say the least. What about you guys? Do you see some serious flaws or other potential benefits to a transportation system like this? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And hey, maybe we can have a pretty decent conversation about the benefits of technology in society. Before we depart from today's video, let's take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. Chinadu Opera says, Cosmic Hellfire, definitely my future dad rock band name. Well, Chinadu Para, you've got great choice in dad rock band names, so you can have that one for free, I guess. Next one though, I start charging royalties. On that note, just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just life's biggest questions in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching Live's Biggest Questions, and until next time, you take it easy. <laughs>